In this part two episode, we look at the costumes of two monumental figures of House Stark of Winterfell, Ned Stark and Jon Snow, coming up. Welcome back to another episode of Costume Co. If you're new to the channel, I do almost weekly videos about movies and television from a costume perspective. By subscribing and hitting the bell notification icon, you'll be sure to keep up to date with any new videos. In part one of a two-part series, I examine the costumes of Ned Stark from the HBO series Game of Thrones. Let's get right to it. Warning, there will be major spoilers for seven seasons of the HBO series Game of Thrones. It's hard to believe that Ned Stark, the central figure of Game of Thrones, seen here in the series premiere Winter is Coming, only made it to episode eight of the first season. But despite this, his character endures in many references to him and his legacy through his children, most notably Jon Snow. Costume designer Michelle Clapton says of the Stark family patriarch, Ned was never seen adopting any of the clothing styles of King's Landing. He had four different looks, a couple of which were slightly smarter, but Ned generally chose to keep things functional and practical. So to that end, he'd often be seen in the padded linen skirts with the leather doublet, sometimes with a cape. Later in the season, as he began to sense trouble brewing, he started wearing his leather armor. Clapton adds, Ned Stark has an elegance about him, but he's incredibly practical. I don't want him to look like he ever thinks about what he's wearing. British actor Sean Bean, who portrays Ned Stark, says this of his costume. What he wears, you know, says something about who he is, so he's not prepared to be flouncing about like the others in gowns and silks and stuff like that. Here's Michelle Clapton's costume rendering of Ned Stark's costume from episode one. Her notes read, wool cape with crossover leather straps center front for security when riding, etc. Leather trousers and boots, heavy padded undersleeves and skirt for warmth and protection, leather doublet, heavily oiled leather, fur pelt. Ned's posed here in this great shot holding his Valyrian steel greatsword ice. His full length cape is made from a heavy burned out wool fabric that's then topped with a wolf pelt and it's all held into position with wide leather cross straps. This is the most commonly worn garment of all the northern houses in Westeros. And Clapton has said in interviews that adult Starks will wear wolf pelts while children like Bran and Arya wear rabbit. Here's a close up of the texture of the wool. And in this image from episode two, we get a clear look at the quilted heavy linen sleeves and his brown leather jerkin, which is a type of medieval vest. Historically speaking, a gambeson is the name for the quilted and padded undercoat that would be made from linen or wool. This one here is a reproduction of a 15th century linen quilted gambeson that's from the Padded Armor Company in Great Britain. Clapton also cr often creates a series of detachable bits like the sleeves and the skirts so that they can be swapped out. This is a theatrical technique that is both cost effective that can also give you a variety of looks without constructing completely new garments. We see this with Arya's costumes in season 7. The gambeson transitioned into a buff coat, which was a sturdy leather defense garment that provided effective protection against sword cuts. It was typically worn under armor like a breastplate, although it would also serve later as its own protective garment. And this particular European buff coat is from the Met and it dates from the 17th century. There's an incredible amount of breakdown on Ned's costume that's done by a team of painters and dyers and breakdown artists. This is one of the greatest strengths of Game of Thrones, as I've mentioned often. The quilted skirts, normally part of the gambeson, in this case are a separate garment worn on the waist under his jerkin. 
Clapton said in an HBO behind the scenes video, I used medieval Northern Europe as a starting point, but the skirts in the men's costumes have a Japanese look to them. We were never bound by the rules of any particular time period. While this might look like an apron pictured here, it's actually a Japanese Edo period haidate that served as leg protection under the Japanese suit of samurai armor. The Japanese skirt is worn around the waist with ties and fastens at the back of the thighs with these flaps. And while the foundation of the skirt is made from a variety of Japanese cotton remnants, the bottom portion is covered in armor chain links. Here's another example of a separate quilted German military skirt from 1525. It appears that the skirt would have been attached to the jacket that would be open in the front, but unfortunately I have no additional information about this incredible artifact. Here's Ned's costume without his cloak in the episode The Kings Wrote. The leather jerkin seen here, which you know Michelle Clapton has referred to as a doublet, sits very high at or just slightly above his natural waistline. This looks odd to us given that contemporary waistlines sit, sit much lower, and the wings or cap sleeves of the jerkin are designed to disguise the points or laces that would attach the sleeves to the vest, while the short peplum of the jerkin is meant to hide the facing of the quilted skirts. And Ned, like all Stark men, but also the majority of Westerosi men I've noticed, wear a leather sword belt, tied Viking style, with the excess belt hanging downward. Here's a really good look from the back. The quilted skirt is made from four quilted, slightly overlapping panels. In episode 3, Lord Snow, Ned changes into a more courtly tunic in keeping with his position as Hand of the King, although he still wears his leather jerkin. He's wearing the Hand of the King pin on his left side, just above his heart. I stated in the costumes of Tyrion Lannister that Tyrion wore his Hand of the Queen pin over his heart as well, while in juxtaposition, his father Tywin and Kyburn wore their pins on their right side. The body of Ned's tunic is grey, although it's hidden in this image under the wings of his vest, while the sleeves and skirt are made from a grey-blue cloth like a low pile of velvet or perhaps wool. The two-section skirt of the tunic has little or no flare, but there is plenty of ease of movement with the opening at the front and back. In the Season 5 episode, The Wolf and the Lion, Wonder Who's the Wolf, Wonder Who's the Lion, Ned wears these oxblood colored gauntlets made from a soft kid-like leather. They're the same color as Sansa's belt from Season 7, I might note. Here are some promotional images of actor Sean Bean in costume from Episode 5, The Wolf and the Lion. And I'm pretty sure that it's his own beard, but he is wearing a very good wig with a perfect color match to his own. You have to look very closely to see a hint of the lace front at the top. His simple leather vest, a garment he wears throughout much of Season 1, is cut from dyed leather without binding or lining so that the leather edges are left raw and we see on the reverse the suede side. The shoulder wings and short peplum are attached with long, durable stitching and the leather lacing is drawn up through leather punched holes and then tucked into the short stand-up collar. Here's an example of a Tudor leather jerkin, sort of similar to Ned's, that's in excellent condition that dates from 1550 to 1600 from the Museum of London, although this example is much more elaborate and detailed. This jerkin, like Ned's own vest, features a sharp tab skirt and shoulder wings, sort of like an extended epaulette, over the shoulders. I'll add that Bran Stark and Winterfell's former master-at-arms, Roger Cassell, pictured in a flashback segment, both wore similar leather jerkins. In this picture, Ned's not wearing his cravat, which he usually does wear, so you can see that the top of his shirt is just peeking out slightly. And like all Starks, his shirt is dyed a light gray, probably made from linen, and then it's drawn up tightly around his neck. There's just a hint of the side lacing of his leather jerkin that we can see here. 
In this picture, we get a good close-up of Ned's leather trousers. And because they are seamed in the front, they are most likely laced at the back and then the full legs are probably tapered or gathered into a narrow leg cuff so that they fit nicely into his boots. His knee-high leather boots are a very close likeness to Arya's boots in season seven. Ned's belt is decorated with floral belt mounts. The holes are punched with a leather tool, just like the eyelets in his jerkin. These rosette flower style brass mounts are medieval reproductions and available through Make Your Own Medieval. So I'll leave a link for that in the description. In the episode Cripples, Bastards and Broken Things, we see the appearance of Stark armor on Ned or a coat of plates as it might be called. This sturdy leather tabard with diagonal leather plates is particular to the Starks and their army in Winterfell. And Captain Jory Cassell wears identical armor but with the addition of a leather and plate collar. We have very little in the way of coda plates to look at, historically speaking, although this is an excellent example from a grave find from the Battle of Gotland in 1361. These armors were made of metal plates, not unlike the Japanese leather lamellar scales, uh, were slightly overlapping and then riveted to the leather, which decomposed with age. The Swedish farmers who fought against the Danish army wore their armors with male coifs, like a hood, and over male shirts called hauberks. The coat of plates was the precursor of the brigandine, a jacket-like type of armor that protected the torso. Here's an example of a plate metal jacket or brigandine from the second half of the 15th century, possibly made in Milan, Italy. The iron plates fixed to a canvas base with rivets. The red half silk lining was largely decomposed. This armor is from the Basel Historical Museum in Switzerland. This is a really good close-up that shows the pattern of Ned's machine embroidered under tunic. I'd also like to call attention to the hand-worked eyelet through which the laces are drawn through and then the collar is closed with an oversized hook and eye. In later episodes we see a lot more metal grommets on costumes like we saw on Aria Season 7 costume, the one that I just showed you earlier in this video. The metal rivets that keep the metal plates in position on the armor and the whole tabard is bound in leather, although with this type of armor it would do little good if the blade plunged through the leather segments in between the plates. So that's why leather armor like this would normally or ideally be worn over a hauberk or a male shirt as a failsafe. In this flashback scene, young Ned wears the same armor. The skirts of the armor, with a good amount of breakdown to the leather as you'll notice here, closely mirror the lines of his undercoat. This close-up shows the velvet border and gold braid of his cuffs and coat. The border trim is seamed directly to the coat fabric instead of being applied as a separate piece, which I think would give the costume a more tailored appearance. But this is done as a time saver in costume construction. In episode seven, You Win or You Die, Ned is back to wearing his padded sleeves and skirt under his armor. And that concludes part one on the costumes of Ned Stark and Jon Snow. So check back soon for part two when I do a thorough analysis on the costumes of Jon Snow from seasons one to seven. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and sharing it out. And as always, thank you so much for watching.